to you by Sunbeam, the best electric appliances made. The deluxe Sunbeam Mixmaster food mixer, the beautiful Sunbeam automatic percolator, and the Sunbeam radiant control toaster. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a gentleman who they say has one of the most attractive wives on television, Mr. Martin Gable. <laughs> Right. <laughs> On my left, a woman who is one of the greatest cross-examiners since the late Clarence Darrow, Miss <laughs> Dorothy Kilgallen. And now, a publisher and a columnist for This Week magazine who has one of the most attractive wives off television, <laughs> Mr. Bennett Surf. Here's our suave, sophisticated panel moderator with a bushel full of new words to baffle us with, John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We have some very interesting occupations for the panel tonight. Yes, very interesting occupations for the panel tonight. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends, a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first contestant in just one minute. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Sign in right there. R.S. Colley. Right, sir? First thing I have to do, Mr. Colley, is congratulate you on your ability with chalk. Thank you. Man, that's awfully good. Where are you from, sir? Cahoga Falls, Ohio. Ca Cahoga Falls, Ohio. That's right, Mr. Colley, the panel. Panel, Mr. Colley, will you join me over here, please, sir? Are you familiar with the way we keep score, Mr. Yes, Colley? Yes, I am. All right, in that event, let's let the people who've been good enough to come to the theater or in the audience and those who are looking in at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we will tell you that Mr. Colley is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Uh, Mr. Colley, is there a product connected with what you do? Yes, there is. Is it a useful product? Yes. Is it used by both men and women? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Gable. You look like a manly man, Mr. Colley. Is it mostly for men? That is right. Is it something that I could use? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, is it anything that would improve, improve uh, my physical appearance, which sadly needs it? <laughs> no. Mr. Colley said it's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> if Mr. Colley means that nothing could improve my <laughs> general appearance... I don't I'm... think he does, Martin, but I think to be completely fair, we would have to say that the element of improving your physical appearance does not necessarily enter in. So we'll give it a no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, when the men use this product, Mr. Colley, do they use it in their own homes generally? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Colley, when men use this product, do other people know they're using it? Yes. In other words, it is visible? Yes. Uh, if a man were walking down, let's say, Broadway, he, uh, and were using this product, people would know it. People would know it? Yes. Definitely. Yes. Mm. Well, is this product then used above the waist? Yes. Is it used above the shoulders? Yes. Is it used above the uh, mouth? Yes. <laughs> Getting up to the top, aren't I? Is it used above the eyes? Yes. 
Has it got something to do with the hair on your head? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Fancy. <laughs> Oh, dear. Is it something that is put uh, onto the head in some way? Or attached to it? Yes. I think that's a good answer. Mr. Collie said yes, could be. <laughs> is it uh, soft rather than hard? It's very hard. Partially. Partially? Partially. Uh-huh. Uh, is it made of a uh, material of some kind? Yes. We certainly hope so. <laughs> uh, is it a protection of any kind? Yes. Is it a protection <clears throat> against being hurt in some way? Partially. Yes. Partially. Partially. Is it bulletproof? No. No. That's five down and five to go. Mark oh, maybe it's just a... Oh, I'm sorry. Is it used in sporting events? No. Six oh, no. down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Yeah. Is it something other than a halo? <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy, that's awfully nice of you to think of halos when you look at me, but uh, it is something other than a halo, well, yes. I just wanted to rule out that he manufactured those. Is it something other than a crash helmet? Yes, it is. And it is only worn by men. Yes. Is it worn by grown men rather than little baby men? <laughs> Definitely, yes. Definitely worn by grown men. Uh, would it be unusual if a man were walking down Fifth Avenue in this? I would say it would be very unusual. Uh-huh. Is there anything humorous about this headgear? No, definitely not. At seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Colley, is this worn on special occasions, then? Yes. You could describe it as a special occasion, yeah. Uh, would it be a particularly well-dressed man that would wear it? <laughs> well, I, his, uh, for his occupation. Mr. Colley, you should be here and I should be over there. He's in, in the for his occupation, yes, he would be particularly well-dressed. That's correct. It is, uh, can we rule out high hats and silk hats? Yes, you can we rule, can rule out them out. Hats and silk hats. Uh, is there any metal in the object that yes. you mean? There is. And it's not used... Uh, uh, is it used by men in the building profession? Definitely not. No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Would it be used by someone who was going into outer space or into some area that would be rather difficult to uh, stand the uh, pressures of outer space? Yes. I don't know what you call those things. Space helmet. No, not a space helmet. That isn't the word. It's, um... Oh, you would it be worn by an, one of those astronauts? Yes. I don't know what to call it. I'm... Actually, I think if you think about it, you'll find the word that suits. <laughs> a nose cone? No, that's no, not right. No, no, no. <laughs> It's not a space helmet. I said that. I'm sure. Just think. Space you'll, mask. Oxygen. You'll find the word that suits. Just think about it. It's a think helmet. <laughs> <laughs> now, you just think about Why it. You'll I... find the word that suits. A suit helmet. Oh, no. <laughs> a space suit. It's space the whole suit. Thing. That's great. <laughs> All right, now, what does Mr. Colley have to do with spacesuits? Oh, <laughs> Well, he sir, it, you don't test them, I know, Mr. Colley. Do, nope. do you manufacture them? Well, actually, what we'll Design do, I think them? this, we'll flip them over anyway. There are only one or two left. Mr. Colley designs and makes them. He's with the B.F. Goodrich Company, and the important thing, actually, he is working on... Project Mercury now, which is the astronauts. But us girls are going to wear them someday, aren't we, Mr. Colley? We just haven't gotten around to fit the women yet. Our Mr. heads don't have any. Mr. <laughs> Colley, please, just leave it right there. You haven't gotten around to fit the women yet. But the thing that interested me, Mr. Colley has been working on space suits since when? 1934. 1934. Oh. Can you imagine that? Have you earned a living at this up until recently? <laughs> <laughs> up until this time. And now they've got a suit that does it. Mr. Colley, we had a wonderful time having you as a guest, and thanks for coming to visit us. Thank you. Nice to have you.
By the way, Mr. Colley is the head of the group that is working to perfect the astronaut space suit. And now let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please? <laughs> Nancy Guerrieri, is that right? Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Guerrieri. And where are you from? Alquip of Pennsylvania. Beg your pardon? Alquip of Pennsylvania. Alquip of Pennsylvania. People are coming from places that are bound to give me trouble tonight. Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga, and Alquip of Pennsylvania. All right, Miss Guerrieri, the panel. Panel, Miss Guerrieri, will you join me over here, please? You familiar with the way we keep score? Yes, I am. All right, then we let the folks here in the theater and those at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we will tell you that Miss Guerrieri is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Martin Gable. Is there a product connected with what you do, Miss Guerrieri? No. One down a night ago, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, then you deal in services. Yes. Can both men and women enjoy your services? The service, I would say yes. Hmm? Then what would you say no about, since there's no product? Well, actually, Dorothy, what we're trying to do here is not mislead you. The service that is performed could be enjoyed by both sexes. Actually, in this particular instance, we don't want to indicate at the same time that Miss Guerrieri necessarily performs the service for both sexes. Right? Uh, could anyone on this panel, um, if he or she were in the proper neighborhood, utilize your services? Yes. Uh, do people come to you? Yes, they do. Uh, do people come to you in small groups rather than large groups, if indeed they come in groups at all? Yes. Uh, you would... I'll try to ask this so I can get a yes. May I rule out that you ever do anything in front of a large audience? Yes, I think we can rule out that you ever do anything in front of a large audience, can't we? A large audience. Yeah. Do, you, yeah. do you ever talk to people when you work? Yes. <laughs> uh, do you use any sort of implement in your work? Yes. Would you wear something other than what you're wearing now? Yes. Uh, would it be a sort of, of a covering uniform? Yes. Uh, do you take away anything from the person upon wh whom you are giving your services to which you know what i mean do you do you remove or uh the answer is yes darling all right uh i mean in other words the person who has used your services goes away with a little less of something than he or she had before yes do you right. deal mostly with men yes are you a barber well, that shakes me up. John, say. you see what I mean about Clarence Darrow? <laughs> yeah, I sure do. I sure do. Translated Must have studied with the what? FBI. Well, that's remarkable, Dorothy. What led you to believe that Miss Guerrieri would be a barber? I don't know, just a strain of... Questioning, well, I don't that's know, great. Well, Miss Gary, I'm on all meat anyway. hammers. We'll stick those over anyway, just because we have to celebrate something. Actually, uh, Miss Gary is uh, 16 years old, aren't you? Yes. And is a licensed barber, licensed to cut men's hair. Uh, when she's with some of her friends, sometimes you know she will do. Uh, well, you know how girls are. Does, do you shave men too, Miss Gary? Yes, Mister Sir. Anything that has to do with the barber profession. And how many times do you cut them? <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't do this if I were you, Bennett, because uh, Miss Gary always carries a straight razor with her, and she's, <laughs> she's well, she works in her dad's barber shop and uh, is still getting herself an education. And we wish you much success with that education and Thank much you. joy and pleasure in your work. Nice Thank to have you with us.
meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a message from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which I ask my friends in the panel to blindfold themselves, as you all know. Are those blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, John. Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise. <laughs> and we begin it all with Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, the people are laughing. Uh, are you supposed to be funny? I mean, are you either, by the profession, are you a comedian or a comedian? Yes. Mr. Sirup? <laughs> uh, you are a male comedian, are you not? Yes. Miss Francis? <laughs> are you a comedian in the theater, as well as here? Yes. Mr. Gable? Have you ever had a regular television show? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Do you sing? Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sir? He means, that's, that's an honest answer, John. Lovely. Well, now, listen, don't put me <laughs> out there on the fire line. Uh, Question was, did our distinguished guest sing? And the answer is was yes. Lovely. He said lovely. Uh, are you also a motion picture star? Yes. Miss Francis? Have you done any of the spectaculars? Or one of your own? Yes. Mr. Gable? Did I hear you perform the other night at a party? If you were sober, yes. <laughs> Are you Phil Silvers? <laughs> I used to be. <laughs> Glad you put that in the form. This always happens to me on this show, you know. I know. Well, it's happens I to you. I come in and I breathe, and they guess me. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> Everybody you're knows. A lovely something. singer. You are. I am a lovely singer. Sing. Yes, but lovely. <laughs> Bennett, I've seen some of your books. I'm lovely. <laughs> Actually, you all missed it. Phil came in with his hat and coat on, which he has now removed. And uh, I would like to, having made the note that he did come in with his hat and coat on, to say a word of thanks to him. We had a small emergency early today. One of the newspapers in New York, uh, as I'm sure not quite realizing what it was doing, I guess none of you saw it, printed who our mystery guest was going to be tonight, and we oh, called Phil oh, up to say, I won't tell you because we may have him next week. <laughs> you didn't, I won't even tell you the newspaper. Oh, let's tell him. It was but Marlon we, Brando. It was Marlon Brando. Give the show a tone. Give the tone. Huh? You're pretty. <laughs> but we called this extremely fine gentleman up on very short notice and said, look, we're in a real jam, Phil. Would you help us out? And he said, sure. Oh. In my real voice. In your real voice. John, yeah. it's always a pleasure. I uh, kind of went into a, an affectionate... Uh, description of you, and I won't indulge in that again, and what you said about me, I firmly believe in. It was very nice. <laughs> John, yes, sir. I'd like to say that at this party the other night, Mr. Silvers gave one of the greatest exhibitions That's of great. talent and wit and ad-lib quality and adjusting to his audience and so on that I've ever seen in a long and misspent life. Thank you so much, Molly. <laughs> How come, how come I never do that when I get paid? <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. There are, I think, uh, very few people who don't know about Toot Shores, which is not in being anymore. But uh, those of us who were fortunate enough to be good friends of Toots's would be invited to parties once in a while. Phil was always there. And he's at his most wonderful best at these informal affairs when he just takes When I don't get like paid. When well, you don't get paid. Well, that's Penny and I stink up the dress. <laughs> John, Thank forgive your coat and hat. You never know when there'll be a raid. <laughs> well, you've done very well. So far tonight, panel, I must say, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now let's have another contestant. Will you sign in, please? 
Marion E. Swink. Is that right? Mrs. Swink, and where are you from? From Salisbury, North Carolina. Ah, you... And New York. Oh, you work up here, but you're right. from Salisbury. Right. I see. Fine. Mrs. Swink, the panel. Good evening. Panel, Mrs. Swink, will you join me over here, please, ma'am? Do you know how we keep score? Yes, I know, well, sir. There's nothing left for us to do then to let everybody know except the panel exactly what your line is. Panel, we will tell you that Mrs. Swink is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf this trip. Mrs. Swink, you're a very lovely-looking lady. Thank you. Uh, does the work that you do require some kind of training? Yes. Would you uh, say? With your permission. Yes. Uh, within the rather broad terms of reference, which we have to have had to establish, mm -hmm. this would be confusing to them, and I would much rather give Bennett a no when I can anyway, really? so we'll change that oh. to no. That's I one down and eight to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> well, then, is there any product connected with what you do? Yes. Uh, is it a product that can be found in the home? Could be. Is, <laughs> is it a product that I might use? Yes. Would I have, I have used it as a grown-up more than I would as a little girl? Oh, yes, I think so. Well, I would say in most cases you could say yes to that, and I think we might be able to in yours, too. Is it uh, anything that one might wear? No. no. Two down and eight to go, Martin Gable. Mrs. Swink, are female North Carolinians known as Tar Heels, too? Oh, yes. Yeah, doesn't seem right somehow. Uh, is it something that uh, one applies your product? To the person, you mean? To the person, yes. No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, can men use this, too? Oh, yes. Could either of the gentlemen on the panel use this? I beg pardon? Could either of the gentlemen on the panel yes. use this? Yes, they could. Uh, would they be likely to use it in conjunction with something or somebody else? Mm, yes, yeah. I think mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Is it solid rather than liquid? Solid. Uh, may I assume that it is not imbibed or eaten or put in the mouth for any reason? You may assume that. <laughs> uh, is it found outside the home, too? Would it be found out of doors? Yes. Does it have some useful function out of doors? Very. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does it have any moving parts? No. Good. Go ahead, Bennett. <laughs> Four down, six to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Mr. Swank, I, uh, Salisbury, isn't that sort of in the tobacco country down North Carolina? Sort of. Mm -hmm. But can we assume that your, what, your product has nothing to do with either tobacco or snuff? Uh, <laughs> you may assume. Yeah. But that there are dates in it, doesn't it? That's <laughs> not that. Yes, sir. Well, there are lots of cigarettes made around that district, aren't there? But she works in New York. Uh, I know, but I wouldn't mind. She might have been sent up here by one of those oh. big tobacco please, companies. Please, please. Let I have no altercation. Mrs. The Swank, time. we haven't had a question like this since Steve Allen went away. Is your product bigger than a bread box? Oh, <laughs> wonderful. No. 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 It isn't. And I'm afraid, actually, that we've about run out of time. Arlene, do you want to try one question? I just wondered if you ever, if you held it in order to use it. You sure do. Uh, and I won't ask any more because you're flipping that card on me. And, and anyway, Mrs. I want her to have $50 because she's Mrs. pretty. Mrs. Swink prints racetrack programs. You always hold them in your oh, hand. Oh, I want the $50 <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I might say Mrs. Swink is a fellow publisher. She is the president of the official program company, Incorporated, of Valley Stream, Long Island, and prints all of the programs for the New York track. Thank and you Martin, very much. And Martin, how come you nice didn't know her? Nice to have you with us. <laughs> Good night.
that wraps up on that happy note. Good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night. Good night, Martin. See you later, Arlene. Good Race night, track. Good night, Martin. See you later. Good night, Bennett. Good night to our little shaver, John Charles Daly. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Life.